call out and cancel culture. We all say we hate it, but it still happens. It's still happening. It's still being made. And no matter how unanimous we are in saying that it's annoying and flawed, it's still extremely popular and relevant, especially in the art community. So let's talk about it, and why I kind of don't like it most of the time. Emphasis on most of the time. The way information and events spread in the art community is kind of strange and unreliable in my opinion. There is a certain genre of content creation that kind of aligns heavily with what I do, so if you like the style of my videos, you've probably seen this genre before. And I'm talking about the call-out art video thing. Yeah, this type of thing where it's like some speed paint and it's someone's mascot or face or whatever with the edgy black bar over it and the catchy title and stuff and you start seeing identical clones the exact same video but just from different channels replicate and take over your entire recommended for a few weeks. Those videos. If you're still a little confused about what I'm addressing here, a really common video type in the YouTube art content creation community are these style videos addressing drama surrounding creators, typically creators with larger platforms. They're generally video essays that summarize what it was that happened and who was involved. I'd like to clarify that I'm talking about a very specific category of videos here. I'm not talking about just any video essay in general. I think video essays are chill as someone who literally enjoys making them myself, and what I'm talking about here isn't that. It's specifically call-out or cancel culture-related content. So I think I'd like to say that there are three types of these videos. I'll be referencing these categories throughout the video, and I'm just going to establish them and what I'd define them as real quick. Awareness, as in this is just a documentation video of an event that happened, and they're here to lay it all out for you if you're confused about what the flipping freak is happening. These are made just to clarify the context of a situation if you're hearing about a certain creator being deplatformed and want to be filled in so that you can come to your own conclusions about what you think. A really important aspect of this category is that the video isn't biased. They aren't trying to convince you of their stance. They aren't even trying to give you their stance. They're just simply providing you with facts and evidence. Opinionated, as in, this is kind of an awareness documentation video, but I'm letting my opinion slip into it. I'm trying to persuade you of my stance on the matter. I'm dropping my two cents on what happened and explaining why that creator is bad or why what they did was wrong. Content farm. They don't give a shit about what happened. They're hopping on a bandwagon because they saw it has been taking off and recommended and they want an easy way to generate a lot of watch time by low-key clickbaiting you. These are pretty standalone categories. I made them up, so this isn't some official thing, but I generally think most video essay call-out culture videos can be categorized into one of these things. I don't think they really overlap. They never really fit into multiple. If a video isn't opinionated, it can no longer be considered just an awareness video, and so on. I think a larger issue with these videos is that a large percentage of them are either opinionated or content-farmed. Very few of them are made for the intention of simply bringing awareness to a problem. And I think opinionated and content farm videos stemming from content creator drama are inherently flawed and kind of dumb and unethical a lot of the time. So it might be more obvious to you why content farm videos are bad, but what about opinionated? Why do I think there's something wrong with someone just expressing their thoughts on a situation? This is a fair question to ask. I can understand how initially this type of video may sound perfectly reasonable to you. And I do think there are situations where it may be redeemable, but I guess something I've noticed is that a lot of these people making these types of videos aren't relevant to the situation. This is like a really important thing I'm trying to emphasize here. From my experience, I very rarely see these opinionated videos made by any of the victims or the witnesses. It's always just some random dude. And that random dude, more often than not, doesn't even talk to the victims or witnesses before making that video. They just take information and screenshots they scrounged up independently and then start trying to convince other people about how they should feel on the subject. It's not necessarily even that they're wrong or even that the evidence is untrue, but the essence of someone making a video claiming to spread awareness to help the victims of a bad content creator, but also not even really considering the victims at all, feels immoral. I personally think it is kind of awkward watching someone make, monetize, and talk about a serious situation that they weren't even remotely involved in for what exactly. If you're not trying to raise awareness, then why are you making the video at all? I feel like something important to consider here is that the topics of these videos are usually really serious and often deal with very personal subjects relating to the people who are involved in it. I'm just saying that, let's say hypothetically I was a witness or victim of a manipulative or unethical content creator. I would not personally like someone who I have never talked to before, who didn't talk to me initially, who wasn't even a part of what happened, making a video trying to convince an audience of how they should feel about what happened to me. I don't want a video blowing up that has someone passionately trying to convince a large audience of how they should feel without even getting my voice heard. 
It sounds kind of hypocritical, because how can you be advocating for someone without even giving them a voice in the matter? An overarching issue I have is that I feel like they begin to turn drama into entertainment, which I kind of just have a moral complication with. Arguing about why someone should be deplatformed, as in why someone basically has done something so bad that they don't deserve to have a career as a content creator anymore, isn't the same as talking about your art pet peeves or making a story time video. If you're talking about a serious situation involving real human beings, it's kind of strange to treat it as though it's any other art discussion, especially without talking to the victims beforehand. Now, this isn't always the case. Sometimes the person who makes the video actually does sufficient research and does communicate with the people who are actually involved. And in that situation, I do think that these types of videos are more ethical. But what I'd prefer above all else is hearing from someone who is actually involved directly, as opposed to some random person, because then I know that they were fully comfortable with this topic being discussed. But quiz, you can't stop people from having opinions, you can't stop people from discussing the latest art drama in the art community, what is your actual call to action here if realistically these aren't things you can expect people to just stop doing because you ask them to? Yeah, I get you, it's true, I can't control people and I can't stop them from having opinions. Hell, when I hear about art drama, I also start formulating my opinion in my head. That's human, but what I think we need to understand is that if we weren't firsthand involved, there's a chance we don't have full context. And if we're trying to convince other people of our opinion for no reason other than entertainment, we could be spreading misinformation, or at the very least something generally misleading, which just in turn harms the person we were trying to help or defend in the first place. And you may argue that it's possible that they were just trying to raise awareness and that was their purpose. They weren't making the video just for fun or just for entertainment. But again, I don't think those categories can really overlap. When you start arguing your opinion, you're no longer just trying to spread awareness. You're also trying to spread your point of view. And it's not that the point of view being spread is inherently wrong, but an awareness video is typically unbiased. If you're trying to spread awareness and nothing else, you should be presenting the information as you found it in a digestible way to the audience addressing something you saw without arguing over a position on what conclusions can or should be drawn from it, and allowing the audience to take that evidence as they will and formulate their own perspective on it. And yeah, maybe them arguing their opinion is just them trying to explain to you why what the creator did was wrong. But again, how can you be entirely sure if your stance is the correct one if you weren't even remotely important to this situation you're discussing, if you may not fully understand the context as much as you could? Another thing I find obnoxious is the bandwagon effect, where people will turn one awareness video into a trending topic and then generate content farm videos, which essentially boil down to just re-uploads of each other. They aren't contributing anything new to the discussion, they're just repeating what someone else said, using the same screenshots and the same evidence and saying the same things over and over and over again. And when your entire recommended is filled with identical videos that all have the same stance, you're inclined to just believe that's what's correct and stop supporting the creator that was being deplatformed. I can prove this observation with something that happened a little while ago. I won't name drop the creator since I think that situation has been talked out at this point, but there's a chance you might have a general idea of what situation I'm talking about here. If you don't, then take it with a grain of salt, because for all you know, I could be making this up. <laughs> A while back, a creator got shot onto Oblivion. Many people just did that bandwagon thing of re-uploading the same content again and again. They lost subscribers, they lost their platform, and they left. Because the community unanimously agreed that they were bad. They needed to be cancelled. However, someone finally provided an alternate perspective, and then the art community did a full-on 180. This person was able to return and start creating content again a year later. Everyone rushed back in support of them, and the drama immediately died down. As if we didn't temporarily do the equivalent of firing someone from their main source of income for a year because we just believed what some random person had to say when they weren't even directly involved and they didn't provide full context. And, uh, do you see why I hate this genre now? Those videos weren't spreading awareness. They were spreading misinformation and cherry-picked evidence intended to stir up drama and paint that creator as bad. And it worked. And even if people didn't fully align with what they were hearing, it was talked about to death to the point where if you brought up even a word of support in this person's defense, everybody would accuse you of being all kinds of things. Nobody would shut up and listen to the full context until someone with a large enough platform to do so finally brought it up. There's a big confirmation bias problem in a lot of these videos, as in they aren't showing you everything. They're showing you the screenshots that align with what their claim is. They're showing you what will make you go, 
yeah, this person is really bad. When in reality, there's sometimes more context or more information that exists that the creator intentionally left out or didn't even look for. And if there is confirmation bias in one of these videos, it ceases to function as an awareness video because you aren't actually showing your audience everything that they may want to see to fully form their opinion. You're leaving out information that could change someone's mind. It's like if someone showed a screenshot of a dumb tweet someone made, but they left out the fact that the screenshot was taken 10 years ago, they left out the fact that it was taken out of context, and they never showed a screenshot of the apology that the creator later released. Does that mean their opinion or stance was wrong necessarily? No, they could still be in the moral right, but as someone viewing this from an outside perspective trying to educate myself on what's going on, I still want to see these things. I want to see the apology and hear what the creator had to say to defend themselves. I want to see the dates everything was said, to know how recent or relevant this is. I want to see the context behind what happened, to know what led up to this event. The problem with watching these types of videos to educate yourself on drama is the example I brought up. A content creator who puts these videos together typically doesn't want you to have an opinion that differs from them. It puts them in a hot seat and it stresses them out, so even if they're hiding behind the shield of, oh, this was an awareness video, it's just to spread awareness, they're more often than not trying to convince you of something, either by directly saying it to your face or just by carefully only including evidence or context that supports one side. They make it feel like situations are dichotomous, as in they have two and only two sides that are polarizing. They make it sound like either you're for the creator or against them, but this often isn't true and isn't how the world works. Sometimes the lack of full information isn't always intentional, though. Sometimes the creator was just genuinely unaware that there was more to the story and then faces a lot of backlash from people getting upset that something was left out. But again, that's why it really matters whether the creator is relevant enough to the situation to know enough about it to be credible enough to be delivering it to you. Something that generally bothers me is those channels where their entire brand is making these videos. Not because they're intentionally malicious or something per se, or at least not all the time, but because you really have to consider your speaker here when you're in the position as the audience. This is a person who makes money by canceling other creators. Do you think they're always going to wait for drama as it happens and then summarize it if that's the only type of video they make? Or are they going to start making things up? Are they going to start resurfacing old and resolved drama? Or are they going to start painting creators out of context so that you'll click on it? And yeah, there's a chance that they're genuinely just covering new stuff from an unbiased perspective, but you should still keep it in the back of your mind when you watch these videos from those channels. And you might be wondering, well, if we can't trust these types of videos, if they're often biased or unreliable, how else are we supposed to educate ourselves on what's happening? And it's a fair question that I'm honestly still trying to figure out the answer to. I'd say first and foremost, always go to the source of the situation. So like, go to the social medias of the people involved and read their tweets, read their posts, see them for yourself. But that can't always be fully trusted because something these people really like to do is delete posts when they get backlash for it because they don't want to take accountability and it often leaves you kind of confused and then there's a gaping hole in the timeline. And if that's the case, look for re-uploads of deleted information online. Twitter is honestly not a bad place to look for this. Just check the replies to make sure it's not faked and cross-check it to other tweets by other people to ensure it's a legitimate screenshot. And just for the record, awareness videos aren't always the most terrible source of information. Just be completely sure that it isn't an opinionated or content farm video before you wholeheartedly trust it, and listen to other people's thoughts before throwing in your or. Opinionated and content farm videos are the ones that are dangerous because they are the ones that are most likely to be misleading and throw wood into the flame rather than put it out. One thing I do want to say an advocate of these video creators, not the content farm ones because those guys are genuinely irritating and irredeemable, is that a clickybaity thumbnail or a catchy title does not always insinuate ingenuity. Flashy thumbnails and titles are kind of just a part of making a YouTube video. For them to get into recommended and have people watch them, they kind of need to be dramatized. And if you're genuinely trying to spread awareness, it's kind of important that your video does get some footing in the algorithm. I do think it's kind of annoying when titles and thumbnails are blatant misinformation, though, like just to get you to click on them. As in, they have a really serious accusation on the thumbnail, but that isn't covered in the actual video, or it's disproven in the video, and it's like, okay, don't scare people for watch time, that's kind of weird. But if the thumbnail is that edgy black bar thing with the creative titles, if this is some fantasy novels from rags to riches to riot, a documentary on bad person 101, it's a little annoying, but it doesn't mean that the content is necessarily untrue or biased. I'd say always watch the whole thing before drawing conclusions. If there's any takeaway I want you to have today, it's that you should always be getting as close to the full picture as you can.
And that's pretty much all I have to say here today. I don't usually like making videos that are on the more serious side because it's a little stressful and I'm not always entirely sure if I'll communicate my thoughts well enough. But I felt like this about this topic for a while and I wanted to share my input and hear your guys' thoughts as well. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.